not cool, man. Oh, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> I, I can't complain one bit. It's really nice. Okay, so let's see. So great to have you here today, Jordan, and great for everybody to join us today. So this is another edition of How to Build a Unicorn. And I'm your host. My name is Gary Fowler. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of GSD, Get You Done Venture Studios, Premier AI and Quantum Venture Studio, part <laughs> of Silicon Valley. I'm a 17 times serial entrepreneur with several unicorns under the belt. I was on the original management team of Click Software, which was sold to Salesforce for $1.35 billion, also EVA.AI, an AI HR tech company. Love artificial intelligence and quantum computing. In fact, next week, my new book on generative AI will be released on Amazon, so check it out. So with that, I have our incredible guest today. Jordan Wabe is an incredible entrepreneur. He's been a uh, corporate uh, guru. Um, he's a venture builder. He's worked all over the world. He speaks multiple languages, and he's a nice guy. So today, we're going to talk about What's happening in the world today, Jordan? And we have today companies from all over the planet that are looking to build a unicorn. What, what's happening today? What's happening with venture funding? What's happening with uh, the startup companies in terms of their activities? What's the general overall feeling today? Well, thank you for having me, Gary. It's always good to see you. You're right on most things, except I'm not a nice guy. So if you, if you think I'm a nice guy, He's not really telling you the truth. Now, sometimes we make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I make a mistake showing up here by telling me I make mistakes? What's going on with that, Gary? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, another play, another show. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all good. Uh, well, thanks for having me again. I'm in San Jose today. It's uh, it's still a great place to be, Silicon Valley, as well as uh, if you're in the United States, it's also a great place to be in the U.S., uh, I'm going to have a contrarian approach to venture world, and I am I'm very optimistic and very positive on the venture world. Uh, I'm going to assume most of us are in series uh, seed or pre-A or A, maybe a couple in B, but not that much. And if you are in that space, and I am, uh, I'm very bullish on it. I think uh, in spite of the uh, gloom and doom conversation everybody's speaking to, um, the depth and the vast amount of resources and, and capital that are out there uh, is so much that if it drops by, by 10%, 20%, 30%, even 40%, the ability to raise money is very, very real, very strong, and, and still very, very active. Um, we just funded small checks in the last two weeks for two companies in Network VC, which I'm a group of. So don't let the, um, the fear mongering get in front of you. If you are raising money today, uh, it's still bullish. It is not as strong as 2021, which was a crazy year. Uh, 2021, uh, the governments of the world just poured buckets of money on their economy. The United States put 2000 million dollars in the economy just took a, and they just dumped it over the economy of course uh, valuations will go up of course you're going to have crazy investment opportunities of course things are going to go haywire but ignore 21 for a minute and look at the trajectory of investments between 2012 15 18 2020 and now 2022 the trajectory is still going up 2022 compares very well to 2020. Not great for 21. So don't let that get in the way of you doing what you want to do, which is build your company and, and get capital to inject it in it. But um, I was getting a little bored, actually. Uh, last part of 22, last quarter, there wasn't anything exciting going on. There was something called the metaverse and we really didn't know what that was and people were toying with it. And then one morning we woke up and there's this Chad GPT. And it basically said, holy shit, what's going on? And it is the most exciting time to be in venture right now. This open AI is incredible, absolutely incredible. And um, it's going to literally change the the world as we know it not as a consumer but as a company 
And we'll talk about that some more if you like. But if you are in the business of uh, providing software services, anything to the enterprise class clients, you are in for a big, big surprise and a big, big fund ride. So if you haven't taken a pause to see where you are, you really need to do that and do it today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Take a pause today. See where you are against OpenAI and reassess your priorities. So I'll stop with that and get back to you, Gary, because there's a lot to talk about in that space. No, that's great. So the um, the so generative AI, you know, I wrote my first article on ChatGPT3 in 2020, July 21st, 2020. I remember people saying, oh, this is never going to happen. This is just a pipe dream of Elon Musk and Reid Hoffman and Altman. And here we are, right? It's going to change everything. So, you know, companies that are out there from all over the world, think about how you can look at generative AI, ChatGPT3, in a very productive way and to be able to utilize it in your, in your service, in your software, in your technology to maybe be able to make that difference. Those companies that do that, the integrated effectively are going to dynamically shift and change. And I believe create a new standard for what's, what technology is going to be like. So, you know, if we're going down that path, Jordan, and then I just read today that the Series A and below companies are actually getting funded at quite a uh, interesting pace. It's the post Series A companies. Why is that? Why are the well, post Series A companies having problems? And Many times they have revenue. It's um, it's uh, the venture capital uh, was very excited in twenty one. We took a lot of investments, very high valuations, and uh, if you raise money in Series A in twenty one and first part of twenty two, your valuation is probably higher than it is today. So you're coming in a little too expensive, a little too pricey. Um, hey, you want to buy my Honda? You come on over. If it was 2021, it'll be worth 60,000. Today, it's worth 40,000 in the market. Now, nothing wrong with the car. Absolutely, same damn car. So the price is a little higher. Um, well, you got is, a real nice Honda for $60,000, let me tell you. <laughs> well, to be candid with you, uh, in 2020 and 2021, uh, the price of cars went up, right? Yeah, no, that's true, yeah. And now they're back there. But back to, to your question is, so the uh, so that's one. Two, the cost of money has gone up. The, the cost of money has gone Let me say that. The cost of money has gone up. The interest rates is tripled. Yeah, it went from close to zero to two plus three percent. So if you are selling a pen and you are selling it for a dollar, now it's you're selling for three dollars. The cost of money has increased. So, of course, it's going to be tougher to get capital. And uh, thirdly, um, because of this cycle that we went through between pre-COVID to COVID to post-COVID, there's a lot of uncertainty of where anything is going at this juncture. And, and you, as an individual, as a businessman, a businesswoman, you're going to look at it just like a VC would says, uh, let's hold on for a minute. Let's see where that is going. Except I'm not giving you half a million dollar check or a million dollar check or a million and a half million dollar check. I'm giving you five, 15, 10, 20. That's series B. Now we're talking a bit bigger checks, a lot more risk, a much higher impact on my portfolio over the next three to four years. So people are slowing down on the post series A. Um, and again, the market was going crazy. IPOs, you're warning you wake up, there's an IPO. It's not happening anymore. Um, well, I mean, not... the SPAC IPOs, the SPACs were going out like crazy. And I remember we looked at it and uh, we were looking at a potential SPAC and I saw the market turning south and said, you know, this probably isn't the right time to be able to do that. And at the same time, you know, Jordan, the family offices that I talked to are, are eagerly investing. They're looking for deals. They're looking for those families. And, you know, for all of us out there, <clears throat> many of the limited partners and most of the largest funds are families hiding out with individuals or family offices. You just don't know that they're in there. They're pension funds, insurance company, family offices. 
<clears throat> those families are active. In fact, I would say today, if you look at it, they're more active than they ever been. And part of that is they want to know what's going on, not just for the, their family and their family's business, consumer products, goods, manufacturing, but really how can they take advantage of this whole generative AI model? I'll give you a direct example. One of the companies, one of the families called up and wanted to put over $100 million in, um, in one of the generative AI companies. And it was the same conversation that we had several years ago uh, when I wrote my article on GPT-3. I said, you should invest in this stuff now. It's like, why in the world would you wait, right? Now, of course, people don't need the money like they did before because people are throwing money at it. So for all the startups out there, figure out how you can take advantage of this incredible opportunity. But the one thing I caution you on is don't come up with some product or service that is BS make sure that it actually takes care of a particular uh, need and want, and that it's a real implementation, not just to say you have chat GPT uh, or generative AI, but what kind of use do you have and what kind of real impact is it gonna have on your company? What kind of real impact is it gonna have on customers or uh, partners to be able to make that then? And for all of you out there, take a look at it now. If you wait, nothing good's gonna happen. Yeah, I think uh, I, I look at it on both directions, Gary. Um, it's an opportunity, but it's also a fundamental threat to you and your business. It is not, it is not, think of cloud computing back four or five years ago when it first came out and it was cool and sexy. And now, can you imagine a world without cloud computing? Can you imagine a world without that cloud computing? You just can't. Uh, well, that's think, of, right. think of cyber, same thing with cyber. You know, cyber was, yeah, it'll happen, it won't happen. And all of a sudden, boom, it's part and fundamental to your business. So uh, the, the, the AI component is going to be essential to the business, just like an email is, just like cloud computing is, just like cyber management is. If you're not, A, managing your future around that, and B, more importantly, looking at what you're doing and saying to yourself, is there a room for this technology to wipe me out? Or can I make this a wave and ride it to the next level in my business and in my operations and in my business and my service offering to my clients? If you don't do that, I'm sorry, it will not be good for you. Yeah, nothing good's going to happen. You're right about it. I remember back in the late 90s, we started one of the first e-commerce consulting companies when they were saying Amazon's just for books, uh, Scott Bezos is, uh, Jeff Bezos is bleeding money. And here we are, right? You can't even think of a world where we don't have e-commerce. In fact, during COVID, it really saved our lives, right? We could buy things online. The same thing with Zoom. I remember nine years ago, I was one of the early Zoom users or eight yeah, years ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, people said, oh, I'm not going to use this. I already have Skype. I said, you know, this is incredible. Check it out. Now, what, during the peak of the pandemic, there are 400 million daily active users of Zoom. So, and he's worth the last time I read about $20 billion. So go out there, look at these technologies and how they can impact your business. But the other thing is, Jordan, a lot of these companies are here and I've said it, I know several of the people that are on the call today uh, have heard me say it, that it's like having a Ferrari in the garage. And if you don't get the Ferrari out and nobody sees it, it's only just a Ferrari for you. Get it out of the garage. Use the network and contacts to be able to help build the company. Go out there and show people what you have. Ask questions. Um, it is, um, yeah, I have a more relevant, because I don't have a Ferrari like you, Gary. So how many Ferraris do you have? Two or three now? Are you sitting on the third one yet? <laughs> I've had a few sports cars, that's for sure. I, I am, uh, can everybody, I, by the way, wait a second, Jordan. Some people are saying they can't hear us. Oh, uh, they can't hear me. Can can um, uh, Dave? Can you hear us, Dave Smith? Yeah, yeah, I sure can, Gary. You okay, guys are okay. loud and clear for me. All right, somebody just said they uh, couldn't no hear us. Okay, no thanks, Dave. All good. All right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, if, you, if you couldn't hear us, I was giving Gary a hard time having too many Ferraris and not getting it out of the garage. 
Um, uh, so uh, the, the reason I'm bullish on the AI, it's, it's as follows. Um, it is not, it's not a trendy thing. It's an evolution of where the technology is taking us. And it's an evolution of where the world is demanding it. Um, look, I come from the country of Jordan. When I was growing up, and I know I'm sounding old, uh, there was 45 students in a class with one teacher, and we were stacked like sardines. Uh, in certain parts of the world, there's one doctor for every 10 plus thousand uh, people. Uh, there's so many fundamentals in the world that we are undersourced. Uh, visualize a world where we could expand the reach of the doctor, or expand the reach of the teacher, or expand the reach of whoever it is that's improving people's lives by using technology, by using AI. And AI, whether we love it or hate it, is here to stay. Um, a, a simple example. When I was 15 years old, I was doing calculus, and I absolutely hated looking at these tables where I had to look things in tiny prints to do my calculus calculations. So I snuck behind my mom's back, God bless her soul, and bought a Casio calculator for $9. Oh, you! I can't believe you're one of them. <laughs> she was so upset with me. She was so mad. She was convinced my mind is going to turn into mush. But I was able to pull these numbers out quickly. And my time to do my homework dropped significantly, and my ability to get to the next level in my skills improved substantially because I wasn't doing mundane, repetitive, no value add tasks anymore. That's what this AI is going to do at the most basic level. If you're in a business and you're doing something specific, will a generative AI? replace what you're doing in the most basic level? And the answer is yes. So make it your calculator, adopt it, embrace it, and build upon it. Yeah, that's right. Use it as a tool, right? The, the challenge that each one of us have today uh, is infobesity. We've talked about it many times. We have more information in our own personal cloud, the entire web in 1996. We each have over 300,000 items in our personal cloud, the entire web in 1996 with 257,000 websites. You know, within the next five years, you'll have over 10 million items. Think about this. How many times in the last two weeks has some, everybody on this call said to themselves, um, somebody calls and says, I sent you a message. Did you get it? Where did you send it? I sent it to your email. Which one? Your corporate, your personal, your Yahoo, the Gmail. Uh, let me check. Will you send it again? I can't find it. This challenge we have information overload is really crippling us and imagine now you've got slack signal telegram whatsapp linkedin all kinds of places where you can get information we need to have these new incredible set of tools that help us to be able to make sense of our lives to be able to i believe there's going to be two classes of people jordan they're going to be the mm -hmm. people that understand the data and people don't and unfortunately, that digital divide's happening quickly. So what we got to do is really democratize the opportunity and give everybody a fair deal. Generative AI gives us one of those, um, is a hope. It does. And the it does. ability to be able to do that. It, it certainly is. Um, uh, before we move off this family office business, uh, the family offices typically have a 10, 15 year trajectory. They're not thinking the next three or four years. They're thinking way longer. <coughs> And the current environment and what we went through is ideal for a, a well-structured family office to engage now because they're not looking for a return in three to five years. They're looking for a return for the kids and the grandkids. That's what they're working for. They're not working for a payback right now. Hence, uh, because of that, uh, they're a strong candidate to take advantage of the reduced valuations reasonable valuation, I'm going to call it. And in this transition in the economy where you're not entrenched in certain technology and you have to continue to this transition, this shift, this, this next level up is opening the doors for those who can look at things with a fresh perspective and not be stuck on what they have invested in, in the last five to six years. Uh, it's very simple, guys. Um, uh, there is... Uh, 
going to be a shift in the VC uh, ecosystem in the next six to 12 months. Uh, not a big shift, but there's going to be a shedding of some old guard. Uh, the big funds will still be there, but you're going to see um, a new addition of new personas, uh, new ways of doing business. It's already happened. Um, they already want you to be profitable and grow. It used to be grow, baby, grow. Now it's like profitable and grow. So it's a nice adjustment. It's a healthy adjustment. So if you are in the business of a startup and venture, uh, start working on the next step today on funding, on AI, on retooling your company, retooling your business. And if you think it's the right time to pivot, pivot. Don't wait. This is the time where pivoting would make sense for a lot of investors. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, you're, right. you're right about it. I mean, now's the time to pivot. But again, we say, you know, get your Ferrari out of the garage, right? So look at it, do your customer development, go out and don't uh, create something in a vacuum. Ask people to look at what you have, get their feedback, validate your assumptions, and make sure you've got the right product, the right place at the right time or the right service. And you know, one of, many of the mistakes are made is that when we develop these things in a vacuum, we start believing ourselves that it's right. Go out to 25 to 50 people, get them to look at your product or service, Take your iPhone or your Samsung or whatever you have, record the conversation so you got that real feedback and you can use that to impact the product you're developing. Make sure they're willing to grab it out of your hands and pay for it. So sometimes what happens is we get so into the developmental process, we forget to look for customers. We forget to go out to those potential partners and cut deals. You know, there, there's companies that, that I've seen and we've worked with that have done extraordinary things because they go out, they're not afraid to realize their dreams, they're not afraid to incorporate new technologies into their product or service, and they believe in it, right? That's uh, a lot of it's uh, the soft side of it, the big million effect, the self-fulfilling prophecy. So get out there, get out the door, get the product or service moving forward, and this is the time of a lifetime. This is the beginning of the 20th century when Nikola Tesla took alternating current and tied it into motors. And look at how that changed our lives over the next 30 years. Everything changed. Farmers came into urban environments. Hospitals had lights and equipment. I mean, everything changed. Well, we're now in the middle of this next evolution, a revolution, if you will. And that changes upon us. So don't be afraid. Embrace it. You know? I remember reading an article that talked about at the turn of uh, the 20th century, they were talking about cars. And the one person said, why in the world would I want to have a car? I have a horse. I can ride my horse. I have, I can feed my horse. Well, the, <laughs> you know, you can always come up with excuses, but look what happened over the next 20 years. I mean, that's, they disappeared. Indeed. We are in that evolution today. It's bigger than anything we've ever seen. It's going to help us. There are 8.1 billion people on the planet Earth today. And the people on the planet Earth, we need to democratize it. We've got challenges in front of us, things like global warming. We got to double the food supply by 2050 to feed everybody. Simple thing. We got to increase the amount of plant-based protein because we can't increase the number of cows because 26% of the pollution is methane gas. Go out. These are things that are in front of us today and opportunities. We need to go down through. And we need to start working closer together. We've had this technology divide, you know, um, with the phones, we come into our world. Let's bring those worlds together using exciting and innovative technologies like the safe steps that can help bring families, children, and parents together to be able to do incredible things, to communicate, to coach, to do things that are just amazing. We all have the opportunity to do it. We all are chartered with the destiny, but for each one of you, it's a matter of doing it and not talking about it. Get off your hands, move forward, and get you done. Jordan? Absolutely. And um, so, uh, you know, wh where is the market going? What's happening? There's two, two types of environments I, I think of. There is the the US, the Western Europe and certain other countries where innovation is driven by creativity and the desire to 
to excel and do great things. And there's other parts of the world where innovation is driven by necessity. Uh, I urge, I urge people to look at that part of the world as well and see and learn how they have adopted and adapted to the different challenges in their lives. Um, the simplest example is the cell phones. Uh, in the US, cell phones adoption was uh, not so great. We had a lot of line lines and we kind of took on the cell phones and did them as a nice to have. And then the rest of the world jumped in and now cell phones in the rest of the world is an essential way of doing business, paying bills, communication, emails, et cetera, et cetera. Using that example, where you think you want to go in the next three to five years, look at the demand in the environment, not the climate environment, but in the in the society of how your technology may or could use uh, be used to improve their lives, to fix fundamental problems, eating, learning, healthcare, not just entertainment, not just watching TikTok and all that silly stuff, but really running their life. And uh, that's gonna drive major economical changes. And if you can participate in that, if you can support that, that would be a great one. Um, I talked to a guy in, in, I forget which country in Africa, I don't wanna mention his name because I'm gonna massacre it. But he had a nice, cool business, Gary, he was in the business of funding people in that country to buy motorcycles. Because motorcycles is the number one means of transportation to get a job, to make a living, to live. Help to build a unicorn. What was that, sir? I, it wasn't me. Uh, Jim was saying something. My uh, I'm sorry. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> My that's okay. yeah, yeah, that's no, that's no problem, Jim. You it's know, over. Jordan, what I'd like to do is, uh, Dave Smith, are you here? Does not Dave? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And can you do me a favor, come online? Because, you know, you're a living example of a company that's just did it. And there's investors on, there's startups on. Can you come online and tell them exactly what uh, you've done? with generative AI and, and some of the things you've done over the last uh, four months? <laughs> yeah, we really have. Um, I can't, it won't allow me to put my video up. So um, basically what- yeah, there, you are, there you are, I did it now. I think you can- oh, Okay, uh, all right. Yes, Great. so just tell them about the safe steps and what you do because guys for and ladies that are here, so this is a living proof of an incredible company that's really changing the world. So tell them a little bit of what, about what, where you, what your journey's like and where you are. Well, our journey when we, we started four months ago, it was in December really, was, was to learn how we could take our learning platform uh, where we were teaching essential skills to people for future jobs. And what we did was we have transformed it now into a technology company where we're providing an app to parents and students that are focused in, in secondary education. So parents with teenagers, where they're able together to learn the skills that are necessary for the today and tomorrow's job markets. And this allows them to reduce stress, uh, anxiety and confusion on where the world's going. And this will be a continual thing they, that they will use safe steps. Our goal is to use safe steps, not only today, but throughout their lives. So it's, it's dynamic. We use chat, uh, GPT as a reference point. So they have immediate 24 seven support of the skills necessary if they're in awkward situations or problematic situations, they can solve it immediately and not rely on their memory to, uh, to do it. So they can simply say, if they're in a com conflicting situation, they can ask, ask our app, which is named Amy, they can ask Amy, what do I do if I'm being pressured at work? And Amy will give them three or four suggestions on how to effectively overcome it and turn a lemon into lemonade. Yeah, no, it's great. And, you know, Dave's being very modest. I mean, 
He's gone down through and worked with the indigenous people originally and really created a wider, wider opportunity. He's turned it from within four months, well, within six weeks, turned it in from brick and mortar to really an incredible app, mobile app, and then tying in ChatGPT. Imagine what the possibilities are now. It turns it into a company that's uh, interesting to a company that's enchanting and compelling. So for each one of you out there, and by the way, Dave came through GSD, our labs program, our cohort 12, and just had taken the advice and now has created a company that's, you know, a unicorn potential company and really has dominated his space. And I just love it. I mean, it's not only makes you feel good, it's actually creates results, which is where it should be. So for all of you out there, you each have the possibility to do the same thing. And this wasn't rehearsed today. Uh, he just happened to come on this. And I wanted you all to understand that you all have the possibilities to do it. If you believe in your dreams and you really want it to come true. And Dave, you know, you're a stunning example of that. You believed in it. You did it. How long did it take you to get the app built? How long was it? From uh, the time? We, eight weeks. Uh, no, less than eight weeks. We went from concept to being in the Apple uh, store and Google Play in six weeks, I believe, Gary. Six weeks. So imagine the possibilities for each, for each one of you. Get the Ferrari out of the garage, change the world, make an impact. And Dave, you're a stunning example of that. I'm real proud of you. You're doing oh, a great Thank job. you, Gary. Thank you for the guidance. And, and Jordan, what, <laughs> and thank you for reinforcing from your point of view where, where the market's going because it's confusing today for us to understand how we can build a, a sustainable and profitable business. And, and I think it's a great opportunity. So, yeah, I, it is, it is. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to call on a friend of mine, if that's okay with you, Gary, he's, he's been yeah. in the HP venture business. Mitchell, are you there? Mitch, I'm going to call on you in a minute. If you're there, say something. Oh uh, my God. You're gonna Mitch, drag uh, the Mitch has three things I like about Mitch. First, he's he's a good guy, nice guy, like not like me. Uh, two, he's been with he was a venture partner with HP Ventures, HP Tech. Wow. Venture. Yeah, hold seen, on. He's let's, seen let's a thing a or two. Is it Mitch uh, Weinstock? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, he's seen a thing Mitch. or two, and he's seen how the technology evolved. Maybe he can give some perspective. And the best part about him, he's my favorite troublemaker. So uh, check, check him he's out. He, he's he's doing so great. He has a picture of his own self on the wall behind him. Can't you? Don't you love that? Yeah, yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> so Mitchell, you you've seen a thing or two. Technology evolve over time, right? You and I and Bruce were having dinner the other day, and you were talking about how this was there. Where do you think this open eye going in your mind? I, I think you know. I think it's really important to make sure everyone's got the guardrails on, you know, uh, because I have also lived with the cyber guy on the team. So I get to see all the nasty things that are coming through and how, how the generative AI stuff has become problematic. My worry is very often just jamming things in there so you can say you're buzzword compliant becomes a problem as investors start looking at these things. They really want to see this stuff work. And as you said earlier, you know, get the, get the Ferrari out of the garage, but you better make sure that you know where the emergency break is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that's part of the challenge, right? So we got to go down through and and we don't know what all the answers are because we're not sure where the guardrails are today. But one, one thing we do know is that we're inundated with information, Mitch. You got, you know, the the individuals. I mean, there's 123 zettabytes of data estimated on the planet. That's right. If we took CDs or DVDs, and stacked them one on top of another today, it would go 94 times between Earth and the moon, growing about 68% per year estimated. So the challenge we have, you know, I've talked to the head of the quantum lab at Harvard, MIT professors, uh, ultra wealthy folks, they have the same problem, which is how do I deal with all the massive amounts of data that's coming at me from everywhere? Right. And so uh, I, I thought your calculator example was a great one. So you know, everybody does need tools to be able to, to deal with all this data. I think you have to also project to the investors and the people using your products, 
what levels of safety, what levels of privacy, and what levels of care you're taking around it to make sure that they're protected. So, you know, we hear a lot of the stuff coming out of that, that uh, chat GPT piece that some of the stuff just isn't right. You know, there's a lot of mistakes, but there's so much accurate information in there that you may miss all the mistakes. So building the product in mm -hmm. such a way that you have filtered for that successfully and you can trust your calculator all the time. How do you convey that in the process of putting it into the product? No, so, I agree with you 100%. I mean, it's, it's you know, we're, we're in an interesting place. It's when I read about the, uh, the turn of the century and the guy was talking about his horse and then all of a sudden, you know, there are no more horses. Um, and then we talk about electricity um, or we talk about Tesla, right? And Tesla with wireless communications, X-ray. Um, I mean, a lot of what he talked about then has happened now. So we don't want to fear it. We don't want to be afraid of it. We just want to be cautious because if we get too afraid, nothing's going to happen. But you're right. We got to be sensible about the utilization. But today it's almost, it's a blue ocean. There's so many opportunities. There's so many companies to use these technologies to be able to make their dent in the universe, whether it's living longer, living better lives, to be able to help our manufacturing. For God's sakes, we couldn't even get a roll of toilet paper during the pandemic because we didn't have transparency in the fly, uh, supply chain, right? So we got to come up with, you know, keep it simple, stupid. We got quantum computers, but no toilet. I actually bought toilet paper from a marine supply house. By the way, the worst toilet paper in the world because it's like one ply and it's, it's biodegradable. It doesn't work. So anyhow, we, well, we that, that's an example of, of getting people used to how this can be beneficial. And if you take a low level example, let's take something like Lenza AI. If you haven't had a chance to try how some of this generative AI stuff works in a very low non-confrontational way. So you load up 20 selfies, and then have it spit back some pictures of you and see what it can do. Um, just getting people used to the idea of how it can be beneficially used in a way that's non-confrontational and doesn't take a lot of thought. Lenza AI is a great example of how they've done that. And they've made a bunch of money very, very quickly. People kind of get sucked into saying, give me another 100 pictures. I, I'll, I'll pull one of those things out and use it for myself. So it's being used in very simple ways and very complex ways how you present it and how it, it gives you the materials that you want. Find the stuff that really matters. Um, start off with something easy and, and make sure you're experimenting with yourself so you understand how broad this technology can be. No, I agree with you 100%. So, 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 you know, so Mitch, uh, I'm not gonna let Mitch off the hook so quickly because uh, Let's let's pretend you and I are dish dash having dinner again, and we're just shooting the breeze, and nobody's listening. Nobody's listening, just you and I. You know, <laughs> what's what's the future of this in the enterprise class applications? Well, I think it has tremendous potential. I mean, there there is going to be the the corporate tools that exist today that are going to have this layered in, um, and it's going to be you know. The day before RSA is coming up in about a week or so, Microsoft's going to just start to disclose how they're using this technology to help find all the bad actors and how to help you with cybersecurity. Now, how they're going to do that, how they're going to integrate it, this is a perfectly good example of using generative AI to protect you from cybersecurity attacks, right? Um, that's going to be a very tricky thing to pull off. Uh, so they're going to spend a whole day talking about this, and I'm going to have to take my Sunday out and go find out what they're really, really going to do. But every element of digital transformation has the elements of being supported by a better calculator, a way to get this material back, a way that you can you can get better answers and and have a new collaboration system where you have this tool that's helping you make better decisions. So almost everything you can think of where there's a, a corporate web app, the ones that we all hated when we worked, whether it's- Yeah, remember those? Yes, yes, exactly. Sure. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's ever had to do an expense report at a corporation knows how bad that can be. You know, they don't, they, they don't use Expensify. They use these terrible things they wrote back <laughs> with under, Cobalt 66 or something, and you know, <laughs> terrible UIs. 
all that stuff's going to get fixed. Um, and they're going to have these things layered in. So how it comes through, how it gets approved, how you implement it, how you save people. You know, think about all the, the digital transformation guys now that have to send out a group of people to go look at your corporation and figure out where all the constipation is throughout the system and then yes. help fix that. You know, think about all the issues that they have with SAP. All that stuff's going to have a layer with these inference engines that are going to help them. And their answer is going to come back faster. And you have to understand what to do about that and how to operate with it. And more accurate. Hopefully. And more consistent, right? Right. So we went from toilet paper to constipation. I'm going to take us in a different direction. <laughs> uh, one of the problems I dealt with, I used to work for a company in 21 and 2022, and uh, those damn contracts. You get the contract, you review it, you send it to the lawyer, the lawyer sits on it for two days, he sends it back marked up, you review it again, you send it back to the lawyer, and then you send it back to the third party, and it's taken a good two weeks just to look at a freaking contract. So I'm working with a group called Speed Legal. Uh, they work for the evil competition, Gary, called Skydeck. And they're, they're AI in the process of looking at contracts in a way that you do your work, you put it through the engine and it comes back with all the elements that the attorney would take five minutes to do and three days to get back to you. Imagine a world where most of this work, whether it's contracts, product design, specifications, HR, uh, code reviews, there's a company in Israel who's doing open AI for uh, cyber code reviews. Imagine a world where you have all these capabilities, vertical niches to help you get the constipation out of the system. Well, let me give you an example. You know, a, a very typical thing is to do a confidential disclosure agreement, a CDA. You know, the first thing I would always do is look and see, is there anybody who's trying to protect trade secrets? You know, to scan through the document, look through that, Get it out of there because I don't want to be exposed to trade secrets. I don't want to. I don't want to be protected from it. I don't want to see it. I don't want you to tell me about it. There's certain keywords that are going to be throughout those documents that I want to eliminate if they're not using my paper. So you know, to have something that's smart enough to scan for my keywords on a regular basis, especially when my lawyers haven't approved it, you know, that's that's going to be a great tool. Now imagine a Wally says, "Oh, you don't like it? Please fix it for me." And Boom, you get the verbiage, the elements to say. Red lines, sure, fix. come back with the red lines. This is my standard red lines. So and, yeah, yeah. And, and eventually it'll be that you don't even have to do that. It'll already be red line for you because it knows what you want. It's yeah. going to be to the point where we're at that. So I wanted to, I want to uh, close this out. We're a little bit over time. Michael, thanks, or Mitchell, thanks so much for joining us. Dave, thanks Can for I go back on. to my hobbit bowl now. Thank, Thank you, George. You. No, we, we appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody out there. As I said, my name is Gary Fowler, and I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of GSD Get Shit Done Venture Studios. We have a lab called GSD Labs. We take companies that have the potential to be able to go global and help them across the board develop the story, to develop their pitch, to go down through and look at potential investors worldwide. Today, we have 132 companies from 56 countries around the world. We take more of a laser precise approach to it. So we are taking the Ferraris out of the garage and we are going down through <coughs> and get them on the track to be able to win the race. So Jordan, thank you so much for joining us. You can reach me at gary at gsdvs.com. Please reference the event today. Happy to talk to you and stay tuned, stay happy, stay safe and stay healthy. And let's go out and let's get you done. Jordan, anything else? I'm, I'm just happy to be here. I'm a big fan of you and what you guys do. Uh, GSD all the way. Number one choice. Number two choice is talk to me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank guy. you, Gary, for always. having me. Always a pleasure, sir. Always. Yeah, yeah, we're active. My book comes out next week on generative AI and Amazon. Um, check out GSD Presents, Silicon Valley AI and Tech. We've done about a thousand podcasts, people like Guy Kawasaki, four-star admirals, investors, uh, actresses, et cetera, but people that are making the dent. So stay tuned. When is, when, is, when is your next cohort start? Real quick, Gary? 
the cohort started now. So we actually have uh, two slots that are open for this uh, cohort. We don't take any more than seven and we have a thousand applicants. So if you're going out there and you want to get the variety out of the garage, let us know. We can help. All right. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye now.